who's the best coach to come? It's Conte. But if I was Conte, I would really think about playing for ADL. He's a I disaster. I don't think Conte would fit. I kind of disagree with this characterization of ADL. That was Send not off. even a like yellow. What? <laughs> that was not, <laughs> not even a like yellow. That's a foul that you got sent to jail. Yeah. yeah okay. you're gonna... Olivier Giroud went into net. He had to put Magnan's jersey on and he actually had to make a save. That's Omar. right, man. We got it. We got it. Giroud. Where'd you even get those? Where did I get? Don't worry about it. I got connection over here, okay? Meow, that's right. Right? <laughs> I don't know what that means. It's from the Pokemon. Yeah, that's uh, right. Oh, you want to get rid of line. this? Nah, don't get rid of it. We have IFTV, no. <laughs> you came up with that? Ah. Uh, that's good. IFTV. Vino. Where'd you come? Where'd that come from? I don't know. I got I got what, connection. Let me not. Was just... it the hit on the head? Yeah, there, it was the hit on the head that got it to me. This was the uh, so guys, the we, Romans into the Greeks. They just <laughs> copy this thing and try guys, to build By the way, guys, if you are live, we are tasting right now live IFT vino on the live podcast. That's right. All right. Meow, that's right, right? I don't know what that means. It's from the Pokemon. Yeah, it's uh, a cartoon. I never understood. <laughs> Man, you know everything. I you're do. From Pokemon? Pokemon. There's Pokemon, not, a, not Pokemon. Not Pokemon. Pokemon. You're, you're, you're on a Pokemon? Jesse. Yeah. James. <laughs> yeah. You said you Crazy. know everything. He said you don't know how to duck. Who said that? Oh. And, and you don't know Who's how to fish, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> oh. Yeah, also, we were told that you went fishing today, you woke up 5 o'clock in the morning, and you didn't come back with one fish. Hey, you, you know, know why? You know why? You know why? what happened? Because uh, somebody that was baiting my hook, <laughs> he didn't bait the hook the right way. Mr. Producer? Why are you always blaming everyone? Yeah, but you, you're the fishing I man. actually caught a couple, couple decent yeah. fish. At the fish market. <laughs> Wait, let me finish. Let me finish. And one of them was a sea robin. You know what a sea robin is? It's no. one of those fishes that when you, they say, quack, 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 they talk a little bit. How's it go? Quack, 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 quack. Uh-huh. So while well, I was a fish about it, that talks, he can confirm it to you. It, it sounds it, about it. Mr. Producer, he can confirm to it to that. So when I was putting the, the actually we have them on video too. While I, was, mm. uh, while I was putting the sea robin back on the ocean, because mm. it was not definitely a keeper. Uh, I heard, uh, I got Forza Milan. I said, holy shit, <laughs> he's a nice kid. How much wine did he drink? Huh? How much wine? No, did no wine. There's no wine on the boat. Anto, no. We have a real problem if the fish start talking to you too. <laughs> we got a real no. problem. Hey, we got to check you into you the con- mental hospital. There you go. Enrico can confirm it. He's got a live right there in the camera. Okay. Uh-huh. We'll show it on the on the video. We'll pop it up. On okay, the we'll pop it up. Okay, so pop, pop, pop. so you're using excuses. You always get mad at all the coaches. You get mad at Sadi for using excuses, uh, Rudy Garcia for using excuses, but then you use them in the fish. Hello. <laughs> I can do whatever I want. <laughs> that's right. And then sure. with a glass of IFT vino. Oh, that's a well good name. Cheers. Oh, man. Cheers. How about you? Cheers. Cheers. Oh, we I, didn't I have I enough cups. My, I already drank the bottle. Okay. Okay. One more time. I like that. I like the idea. That. I like the idea. How you doing? I'm good. What do you think about this weekend? Well, this, this weekend... Um, I was, uh, we had a nice uh, surprise. I mean, uh, not really a surprise. I thought that Fiorentina was gonna do, I told you this before the game started. I said, Fiorentina is gonna come up with something before the game. But did you think a so, win? Um, well, if, the, if you come up with something, you either come up with a point or three points. So I was not uh, really uh, sure. If I was a betting man, I mean, you bet Fiorentina, you bet $25, what the hell? If you lose, you lose $25, you know? But um, we're not betting men. That's why I put a tie and, uh, you know. I, get it. I, uh, I, I didn't lost. bet, but I predicted a win. Did you, were you there live for watching for the game for Fiorentina? Fiorentina? I mean, it's a few different things, but okay. Right. Well. But, you know, there was, I think, uh, uh, this was a nice uh, um, surprise. And Fiorentina is in third place. And I don't think that... We expected at this point for Fiorentina to be there. Absolutely. And, and not. out of the all all the teams that go up and down, up and down, Fiorentina is a solid team that is playing good football. Some of the I, best. I think we mm. agreed, you know, Lazio goes up and down, Roma goes up and down, even Inter, uh, you know, with Bologna. Uh, uh, so this was um, good, good for, th- and they have a balanced team. The, they are the ones, if you look at um, Milan, you say, well, they only have one center forward. If he goes down, what happens there? Uh, Roma, Dybala goes down, they suffer. Hey, Fiorentina has got a balanced team, and the forwards haven't scored yet. 
Okay. Yeah. Zola hasn't That's scored. True. He has one goal. Beltran. He has one goal. Beltran. And Beltran. Uh, so yeah. I think Zola eventually is going to come through. For sure. Because he's got some uh, some good That's qualities. Good. Was that the best game you saw this year, Mike? That was a really fun game to watch. Um, it was really back and forth. There was a lot of chances in it. Uh, a lot, lots of counter-attacking football, lots of missed chances, and uh, underdog. It's always nice to see an underdog win too. It's it makes it more exciting overall. So, but going back to what we were saying before in terms of uh, Fiorentina and Napoli, Fiorentina great start of the season, doing amazing. Gaidano, I agree with you. As soon as the strikers start getting more involved, it's it will be scary to see where where they they'll end up in the season if they continue this, and Napoli another. We'll save that for after. Yeah, but. let's let's dive deep into it. Honestly, I think we could do an entire podcast on this game because there's so many levels to what I loved about it. I, I felt like Napoli were pretty lucky that they even got a goal because the, was a the only goal was Parisi passing on yeah. the ball. And was a, Otherwise, I don't think penalty. Napoli would have scored. You know, That's how, been, but, but it was all Fiorentina's well, press. Italiano prepared this game to perfection. You know, he stopped any anything that Napoli tried to do. He had to counter to it. And he had to make two very important decisions. The first was leaving Nico Gonzalez on the bench. He's your top goal scorer, four goals in the season. He had to ro rotate because 60 hours before, he played in the Conference League. Mm -hmm. And then we never even saw Beltran or Bara come into a game, who no, are Barak very didn't good in. players. Didn't come in. Didn't but that's come. what I'm saying. That's what They're said. going to Naples. Yeah. They won so much that they could even leave them on the bench, and he played some of the youngsters. I was listening to his interview mm. before the game, and I love that he had no excuses. He said, we don't care that we had two days less of rest than Napoli. We're going there to play a good game, and oftentimes Fiorentina play really well against Napoli, and they don't get the result. I'm so happy that they were able to because, for me, over 90 minutes, they were by far the better team. You know, and I was listening with uh, the producer uh, while I was coming back from New Jersey uh, with the car, and then it was Ciccio Graziani on uh, Radio Sportiva, and he characterized the, the, the game and the results and what's going on in Naples uh, right, now, right now with this kind of stuff. I said, once you, you, you just got all the, all the juice out of this lemon, there is nothing else that is going to come out. So he was negative on Rudy Garcia because Rudy Garcia keeps, uh, keeps uh, you know, subbing Aussie men and some of the, the best players that you need at that time to make a you know things happening for for your team because you're down you gotta you cannot take uh, you cannot take all the men out and then it's actually it's actually confirming what i said the last time that uh, this team i al he already overachieved in the last year and then it, it, you cannot really go back to back you 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 have to just it's a, it's going to be not a down here but it's going to be a year that uh, you can have uh, you can have a little more problem to just replicate what you did the year before. And then it's a lemon that is already squeezed that you cannot really get anything else out of the lemon mm -hmm. anymore. Maybe they need another person to squeeze the lemon. Well, he kind of put a nail, a half a nail on the coffin for Rudy Garcia because uh, he thinks that, uh, the, that the players that Napoli has right now, they're not playing uh, their full potential and that this guy and this guy, uh, it's not really getting uh, the results that Napoli was expecting to get. Do they, I mean, is anything else about Fiorentina before we go to Napoli, by the way? Fiorentina deserves to win, don't get me wrong. Fiorentina played a spectacular game. So Napoli, Napoli's oh. got a lot, a lot to be, to be, uh, to blame I, themselves. I think that for all the abuse that uh, the Fiorentina top management that have gotten, I think now it's a nice satisfaction for Joe Barone, Daniele Prade and Rocco to say, hey, listen, we worked very hard to put this team together. We finally are getting some results. And I think uh, they are sleeping good this last couple of days. Also <laughs> off the field too, like I think 360 degrees. Obviously we care about the pitch. The pitch is the number one thing. That, that's what we want to see the football. And they play some of the best football and they're getting the results, like you said, third in, in Serie A. Also off the pitch, they're opening the Viola Park. So they're showing that that this is the way that we need to build teams. We need to build them where we have a training facility that's top of the line. That It looks like it could be Real Madrid's training facility. That's how beautiful it is for young players to come. So the fact that they got this win at the moment that they're inaugurating their Viola Park, I think, was nice for them. A um, couple more things I just wanted to add. I loved um, Artur mm. for Fiorentina. A player who was doubted for so long when he was at Juventus. So many people talking about him. Oh, he doesn't have the qualities. It shows you what a coach can do. And I think Italiano is getting the best out of him. He's getting the best out of uh, Cayode, the young right back, oh, God, Italian man. right back. And Parisi, despite the mistake, he made up for it in the assist. I thought he had a great game besides yeah. that. So the fact that they're even integrating young Italian players, what more can we ask for? Yeah, I was going to bring up the Parisi part, actually, where some people were going back if 
Parisi should be the starter or Biragi should be the starter because we all know Biragi's like has been the starter there, the captain there. But Parisi's young blood, you know, youngster Italian, and even though you're young, you, you're prone to make mistakes every now right. and then. But you can see that there's potential, and you want to give confidence rather than sit him out and be like, "Listen, you made a mistake, but you're gonna build from that." Right. So and if I'm not mistaken, uh, Parisi and Biragi they play together. One played in the left yeah. and one played in the right. They, they, could, switched. they could do that. So they think yeah. they switched. So, and that's good. Gaetano, right. I think Bilag is going to be misplaced for the national team because Parisi, I think, he's got the quality to make it all the way to the, to the, to the level. you got to accept that he's going to make mistakes. Like He's a young Italian. He yeah. did really well with Empoli last year. He's mm-hmm. great on the dribble. He's great going forward. Uh, he's prone to mistakes. It was a really bad mistake because he got them back 1-1. Mm-hmm. But it's one of those things that we need to accept uh, with age. To grow. And was speaking he, about age, your was boy... Was he another Ventuno? Did he play under 21? Yeah. Uh, yeah, see? There you go. Your boy, Bonaventura, too. We didn't mm, even we Jack, didn't even mention Jack, him. Uh, he's forget good. about it. Jack, he's, a, uh, he's an IFTV vino. Jack, getting better Jack, with age. Yeah, the older he gets, IFTV, the better he gets. IFTV, 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 IFTV vino. IFTV vino. IFTV vino. Jack is unbelievable. I regret it. I, I never liked the idea to to uh, for AC Milan to give up on him. But when we give up on the Jack, is because... Uh, he, see, he was injury prone the last year that he was at AC Milan and so uh, they were shopping for somebody that was a lot more solid and consistent on the midfield and we got hey listen we got Benacer we got a top of the line player we got Kessie we got Benacer so I mean I I wish I had Jack with me as a, a backup but uh, hey enjoy playing if you're in Florence what can I tell he you he also got called up to the Italian national team yeah it's a good environment and uh, he deserves it so yeah. uh, my tip my hat off that's good yeah really should we good. move on to the disaster that is Napoli. True. Oh, God. The latest reports today, besides the game that there were zero ideas, no intensity, no aggression from uh, from his Napoli side, not able to deal with problems. You brought it up, subbing Osimhen off when you need a goal. Again, just creating pro- creating his own problems, honestly, in the locker room. The reports today that De Laurentiis was meeting to decide what they're going to do with him. One of the things is the lack of alternatives or who they could get. Conte is their first choice of who they would love to have. The other options are Tudor, who I think would be a really good one. But then there's also Gianpaolo, who they're talking no, about. No, Gianpaolo. At the moment, Too we're still good. waiting to understand, but he might. Uh, Rudy Garcia might get a few more games. Mike, obviously, I mean, all of us didn't like Rudy Garcia from the start, but Mike was very evident. Every Basically, every podcast, we were going back and looking <laughs> that he did like not hater, like Rudy right? Garcia. And despite him winning, you saw the cracks in that foundation. Oh, and you said that he should be <clears> sacked. Yeah, I mean, there there was a few things why I brought that up. The first thing why I brought it up was um, I was mad about the whole ADL situation where he didn't want to pay Spalletti the extra pay uh, Spalletti the extra money, which I thought he he fully deserved. Uh, and the uh, the few other ones seeing him play at, at first, I didn't think Rudy Garcia too was a good enough replacement to replace someone like Spalletti and to replace a coach that just won the Scudetto that if you're going to get a coach you're going to need a top coach after that after after having that incredible achievement you can't bring a a decent coach you got to bring a coach that's either the same level or even better because you can't go downhill from that from that incredible season and then from the season started you just saw how they are you saw their frustrations when they got subbed out they didn't play the same kind of football and at the end of the day they were just missing one player from the starting lineup and they didn't they look like they missed a, a whole different starting lineup it looked like a whole different uh team so there i think there was a lot of different things and just seeing their performances despite the results sometimes they won but they did not look they just look like a shell of themselves from last season overall honestly i am so upset that adl uh, yeah. you know i would sack him but of course he's the president he puts the money so i guess he can do whatever he wants but I'm so disappointed that this guy, the power, the ego power that this guy has, he had a beautiful toy last year. They were playing the best football, probably in in all of Europe. It was like the top two, three teams. Mm. And you were so lucky to get Spalletti because he was shopping around before Spalletti and Spalletti was going to two, three different teams. Then he decided to go to Napoli. And you, you were so lucky to have Spalletti, and Spalletti created a beautiful football, and at the end of the year, you let him go? I mean, you, you got to be... 
And so I blame ADL because he did the same thing with Ancelotti. Ancelotti is a great, he's not only a great coach, but he's also a, a, a great person. And you let him go, so now you let Spalletti go. So uh, to me, you deserve Garcia. Garcia is not a coach for Napoli. He has a problem with those men. He had a problem with those men a couple of weeks ago. He took him out, and the guy told him to go screw himself. Yesterday, Politano told him to go screw himself. He tells Caraschelia to play a fullback. I mean, you got great players. I don't think they want to play for him. I mean, I haven't seen Caraschelia, Caraschelia take on somebody. He takes a ball now. The last two games, he passes the ball back. Hey, you one on one with the guy. You one of the best dribblers. Is that on the coach though? Is that part on the coach? I, I think that it, the mentality of the play and the lack of confidence, maybe Marco and lack of confidence, he's making these players. I don't know. They either don't want to play for him anymore. That's, they don't want. They, they don't want to play for Garcia. And also the creativity, you know, when you're happy, when you play for your coach, you know, you, t- you, you know, you take on, you take on somebody. I, I feel like he takes on somebody, he loses the ball, and then he's not going to take on uh, because I saw him take on a couple of guys and he lost the ball. And then what happens? Every time he gets the ball, he passes back. He passes back. You got to go forward. Yeah. Does Rudy Garcia have an argument? Can he go to De Laurentiis and be like, hey? I lost Kim, who is the best defender in Serie A, and I'm with a team that they're not motivated anymore. These guys want it all. They're not happy, Listen, so it's the players. It's not me. The coach, the number one thing for a coach is to motivate his players. Okay, he cannot do it, you're out. To me, mm, I will, yeah. I will let him out. Guy, and who's the best coach to come is probably the one, it's Conte, is the best coach around. But if I was Conte, I would really... Uh, Think about playing for ADL because ADL is a is a disaster. I don't think Conte would fit Catano, wait for a this moment, team. Wait a moment. Wait. I I kind of disagree with this characterization about we everybody's pointing the finger at ADL. Let me just remind you guys something. Spalletti left. He was not kicked out. He demand he demand an increase on his salary. Spalletti was not told to leave from the team. <clears throat> Spalletti went to ADL and he said, I wanted more money because I wanted the campionato and I made it to the quarterfinal of the Champions League. Uh, he had no clothes on his contract. You know what ADL said? He said, why? <laughs> it maybe is the approach of ADL, uh, of Spalletti toward ADL sort of a demanding. I don't think ADL stands very nicely when somebody demands something from him. Maybe you should have talked to him I, instead of demanding. I well, asked a couple of you're talking Napoli, to somebody. People that the, know the inside story, they said it was not about money and a million dollars would not make a big difference so then, when you want so, so so you want so much money with the Champions League and with the Scudetto right. that a million dollars would not make that much difference. I think to me is an ego power that ADL has and an ego power that Spalletti has. And Spalletti, when he, nobody can tell him what to do. Hey, I remember, and this was from inside, okay? When Spalletti was at Rome, whenever Spalletti went inside the locker room, nobody could talk. You know, you could hear a pin drop that's the demand of the respect that Spalletti wants. And I think there was a power struggle between ADL and, and Spalletti. Maybe ADL was telling Spalletti what to do because it happened with Ancelotti and the son of uh, ADL that they had a problem mm. there. And so I think it was more of a power struggle than the money. But it could be. It Marco, sounds, like, Marco, sounds, you, like, I just say, it sounds yeah. like Agnelli a little bit with a egotistical part where he wants to be bigger than everyone else at the club. I'm the reason why we won, not. Yeah. not and that's right. at the end of the day, you gotta you gotta put and the club ahead of you. That's Marco what didn't this start? That he did that. He did that with Conte. But he Marco. did that with Del Piero. He did that with Buffon, Marquisio, ev- yeah. down the line. Marco. I'm saying Juventus. But obviously. didn't this start two, three, three weeks before they won the Campionato? That this mm. discussion started to it's, take it's, place. The, begin- if the reason why it started is because De Laurentiis triggered a clause in Spalletti's contract that was the automatic renewal. Right. And Spalletti said. As a gentleman, you should not, even if it's part of the contract, you shouldn't just trigger it. We should have had the conversation on, all right, I mm. want a Scudetto. We need to evaluate the project and we need to evaluate also my salary on what we're going to do. He didn't appreciate that the club, rightfully so, because the club is right to be able to do that. He didn't appreciate that they did that automatically without even speaking to him. It was well within their rights, as is Spalletti for being able to leave. We're not saying that anyone did anything wrong mm. legally, but... 
this is also the consequence that you get when you try to go just by whatever's on exactly. the dotted lines. There's some unwritten rules that aren't talked about, and this is one it's of like, the cases. It's like, okay, yeah, you're right, but do you want to do you want to piss off the coach that just brought you this joy? Exactly. Is how I think, and I think also Italiano also showed like, hey, you didn't even put me in the running for. Coaching Napoli, he would have been perfect for this team. But if why, you had to why, get a guy, why don't we give a he would have been the man. Okay, let's split it down to the percentage of uh, who's, who's the blame. I will say Spalletti's got some some blame on yeah, his own so. too. So I will say... 75-25. 75, not, 25, uh, the ADL and 25 Spalletti? No, the reverse. The, yeah, 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 sorry. Yes, 75 yeah. ADL and 25 Spalletti. All right, so Spalletti's got something to be blaming himself. Well, of too, course, so. they, do, yeah. they both do. It's an ego, an ego power struggle between the two of them. Anyway... But you know, at the end of the day, who cuts the check? <laughs> it's yeah. ADL. Well, he's not going to be cutting many checks yeah. for Scudetto bonuses this year. That's for sure. Because uh, they weren't even supposed to win the Scudetto. Let's say it's straight, right? And, and look at and where the team is now. Uh, I know it, it's early. We're only eight games in, but we have to read through and and see from this point of view. I think number one, uh, depending, I think Tudor would actually be a really good option right now because Conte doesn't want to join midseason. Tudor is a really good coach. I think that he'll get a better result out of this team than Rudy Garcia does. Mm-hmm. And if there's a moment, better late, uh, be- better now, um, because but, if you uh, wait too long, I think that Napoli could be in a difficult situation yeah. where for the top four, we're seeing other teams that could fight for that. Yeah, and I think uh, Conte is probably the best option, but the most realistic is Tudor. Um, he, the only thing question with him is could he manage a top team? Team. We saw him at Verona. He was very good at Verona, but then again, he was he was also at Marseille in France, mm-hmm. right? He was at Juventus' assistant yeah, coach. Yeah, assistant, but it's yeah, not but the he's same. Also, but he's also he was a, a player, you know. Yeah. He understands. That's true. That's, 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 that's true. Yeah, looks for it's names. You know, he wants a name. I don't know if Tudor would be the but right. Who is Garcia's a name though? Gaetano. You think well, that Rudy Napoli? Garcia, he, you know, he, 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 he's, he's been around. He's been around. around. Yeah, he did well with with Leon. Is the big reason is because he loved Leon because they knocked Man City out, and he figured I'm getting a more European style of coach i remember de Laurentiis's press conference he said we chose him because yeah. the guy went to the champions league final which he didn't go to the final he actually went to the semi-final he was wrong about he didn't that do his homework <laughs> but either way uh yeah. let us know in the comments whatever you guys think uh obviously open so for who's demanding who's demanding for uh, uh garcia to leave is the napoli napoli fans are just so oh, they're annoying I mean, they're, yeah. the results, are annoying. They, they miss spalletti they're singing the performance. yeah mm. let's move on let's move let's on. on let's go to your team milan <laughs> It was a. It was such hey, a by strange the way, game. The campionato is not over. Don't you remember five one? Don't you you remember all the fun? You remember all the fun five one? I know you remember. All the cucumbers. I remember. I threw them out today. Guess what? <laughs> Guess what? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Producer, they threw the cucumbers out. But anyway, this five one. All yeah. of a sudden, things are back uh, to square one. Okay, so uh, AC yeah. Milan is not dead. Yeah. Juventus is not dead. But Inter who said it's not yeah, no, it's Milan not was no. dead? No, you guys said it's right. over. Inter, Inter, in Inter in fuga. Inter in fuga. In other words, Milan, hey, first. Don't run. Milan got a helping hand they literally were to put them on top of the table. They were there. running. <laughs> they were running. Okay, let's talk about the game. It was a first 65 minutes, 70 minutes where it was not that much was happening nothing, in this game. Uh, you know, I remember thinking, I was wow. like, damn, it's going to be a boring match. Genoa always play really good football. I really. Love what Gilardino does. They consistently against the top teams. They they play a good style. They were without Retegi, and I think with Retegi they could have done a much better job. Goodmanson was amazing. This guy's a really really Albert, good player. Baby. Dragushin yeah. important in the center back position. So they're doing good things for a team from Serie B. They set their expectations uh, very high. Milan get the win, and it's not with uh, without controversy. I know you're already. <laughs> Ready? You're already mad. Hold on, want, hold on. Sit down. Sit down for a second. Want, Let's you're, explain things first. You, you're oh. running away. No, <laughs> because we're talking. Talk hold on. A pit stop. Not yet. Not yet. Um, not yet. A pit stop. Milan scored this goal Mr. from producer. <laughs> Milan scored this goal from Pulisic, which yeah. to many people, I'm not gonna say all, seems like a handball. Helping no, it hand. seems Helping like hand for the that ball goal. hits his hand. And uh, Pulisic scores, hand. and it goes no one hand. zero. Get him here, buddy. Okay. No. First of all, was it a handball? It was not. <laughs> was it a handball? Of course, it was clearly a handball. Yeah, it it, it, it was touches a, whole forearms yeah, and biceps. Yeah. Gentlemen, <laughs> those are all Milan haters. Look at no, the way. You got to say the way it is. On, God, you're, 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 you're like you're dropping lemon on a wound. You know that I say they did ice. They're screaming. They're screaming. They're so mad. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, okay. So we have, you know we have a difference of opinion. Even if it wasn't ball, we won. Okay. We won. We have a difference of opinion. The game then got absolutely crazy. It was, it was one of the wildest endings insane. to a match I've ever seen. I was on the edge of my seat. What happened was Manyan comes out with a flying knee. That was crazy. And absolutely smashes the, the general player. I can't remember his name right now. Gets a red card. That was not off. even a like yellow. What? <laughs> that was not, not even a like yellow. Are you crazy? He that, wanted to head the ball. That, His that, knee was yeah. up because you sound like a, Migrella. That's no, that's, that's, that's not, not a hey, yellow. Was that's not even like that, like that, yellow. That's a foul that you you go sent to jail. Yeah, yeah, you go to jail for that foul. You almost killed the guy. Come on, you killed the guy. Kill the guy. You put the knee in his throat and his head. Oh my God, you. You guys must be watching a different game than I watched. It seems like it. I don't know. To me, it was not, not even a yellow. Then the red card, and now they are saying, oh, it should be getting three, three jornada disqualifica. Are you guys out of your mind? <laughs> that was, that so was not, that was not, not even a yellow. So he hits the guy and then he gets the ball. But either way, you but he's can't go. Straight. You cannot go in that way into a challenge yeah, he's like that. Straight out outside of the box yeah, as can't well. Do that. There's no protection for the goalkeeper. Yeah. None of that BS. Rightfully so. He he gets that. a red card. If that's a player, okay, that does that. Figure about being the goalkeeper. It's a play because he's outside the area. That's not a foul. Oh, because you're thinking, oh, he's the Katana goalkeeper. And he's got a fifty-fifty ball. <laughs> 50-50 ball. I wonder if it was switch what he'd say. If it just My man hit like the it. ball with his head and on the process. After he killed the guy. No, no, no. We're talking about a fraction or maybe one tenth of one second before he hit the guy. We are talking about something that is like a... 50-50 ball, no, That's crazy. it was a 50-50 ball. You know the okay. that You is? can watch right. it with anybody that you right. want. Let's, That's let's. a... My personal opinion, it was a... Right. Yellow. Let us know. Let us know what you I'll think. Right but you, you have to be. Uh, Where's he going? I have no idea. What's he going? <laughs> okay, well, let's just continue because he's he's crazy anyway. You have then, to be objective though, because this guy is is very emotional. Is not anyway, objective. Then yeah. the craziest part was Milan had no subs left, and Olivier Giroud went into net. He had to put Mayan's jersey on, and he actually had to make a save. He had to make a couple saves. The free kick I thought was going to go in for sure. You know that free kick? He and was he, stranded. And I then mean, he came out with a flying punch. Yeah. And he closed his eye, and he, uh, you know, he punched the ball. But the free kick, I mean, put the ball in the net, right? On right. target. Or put the ball you on target. You didn't even put it on the corner. Just hit it straight at the wall. Yeah, yeah. the Why would you go to the wall? That's yeah, what yeah. I'm saying. I didn't understand he, he that went part. Under I thought the that wall. was so brave. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, let's do it. Oh, that's my. right, man. We got it. We got it. Jello, Jello. You put what did you put Jello. on? Goalie gloves? Yeah. Where did you even get those? Where did I get? Don't worry about it. I got connection over here. Okay. Jello, <laughs> Jello. He got my young shirt. Okay. Is that legal? It's okay. You know what? <laughs> is that legal? It's okay. Is, is, is it legal to now, put somebody else's shirt and yes, play? Yes, we got my young shirts. He goes back over there. He puts his gloves on. And he saves the game for AC Milan. Now we have three goalkeeper. <laughs> okay, we have Giroud number one, Sportello. Magna number two, Sportello number three. You don't have you don't have a problem with the goalkeeper. You have a problem with the center forward. <laughs> what are you doing? Mr. Producer, is this legal that he puts Magnan's shirt and he plays the game with the somebody else's shirt? The ref had no problem shirt? with that. The okay. ref had no problem. He seems to me that the, the, the only ref, one having problem with that is The ref did not know what the hell was going on. Yeah, oh. yeah because he should have given. Uh, he should was have a, let it continue to play over Simulan and, and let him score it, a 2 nothing. It was a too. penalty first. Yeah. Oh, yeah, red card okay. afterwards too from the keeper. What are you was, talking about? Not a penalty on us. Yeah. What are you talking about? Wait a minute. The goal that scored. What are you talking about? Wait a minute. There was no Wait me. No, it was Which outside of the box. Manyan came out of the it box. That was outside. Oh, oh, you outside see, of the you box. see. The Manyan thing you're the saying. Manian that was outside. No, no I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about Pulisic. They touched the ball with his hand. Oh, well, that's not a penalty. That's no, not a penalty. You're saying it wasn't a goal. It wasn't a goal. It wasn't a goal. It wasn't a goal. Okay, but they did make another mistake afterwards because, like I said, the game just got absolutely crazy. Genoa were piling it on towards the end, and Genoa's goalkeeper got a red card. And for some reason, I get it. Like you said, the, the referee lost his okay. mind. He lost total control. The ball is played to layout, and there's no goalkeeper in the net for Genoa. And he blows a whistle to yeah. call the red we card. We got penalized from this game. <laughs> no, we got penalized. Was that, was that a red card? <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, oh, but on, the, on the goalkeeper. The play, was that a red card? Uh, the to me, I would have just let <laughs> <a> layout continue. <laughs> I, I'm not 
that nasty. No, that, that's not my yes, question. Yes, it was a red card, but the layout should have uh, continued okay. to play so and that score. So that was a red card, but Magnan was not a red card. No, it was not. It was a 50-50. But the other one was a red card. It was a red card, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. It anyway. was the last man. Hey, it was the last man. <laughs> Hello. No, no, I'm talking about the goalkeeper yes, got a yes, red card yes. because yeah. uh, one yes. of the defender hit Stud, the ball yeah. and he put his Studs leg. Up. Studs up. He put his leg right, over there. Right. That's all. Anyway. Anyway, um, hey, we won the first place, by the way. Okay. Yep, As a reminder, place. we're first place, two points on top of Inter. Well, I, mean, I know things are going to change. Listen, it's too early. Listen. But I like AC to enjoy Milan, my AC Milan, AC Milan has a good team. I, we, I don't dispute that. You have a very good team. You're missing a center forward because you cannot go through no, Champions League Thank and you. Scudetto, Campionato, or Championship with Giroud. You can't. Now, you try Jovic. I don't know about Jovic. Maybe he needs more time. Maybe, uh, you know, he's not ready yet. I don't know. But if Jovic doesn't score any goals, you're not going to go far. You're not going to win the yeah. championship and you're not going to do anything in the. Yeah, but we scored it with Okafor, we scored it with Love to Chicks. I'm talking about a centre forward. forward. You yeah. need a centre forward. Yes, you can, you can have other people scoring, but there's going to be a game where you need your centre forward to, to the score. To the contrary, Newcastle Giroud. and Dortmund yeah. were the games. Listen, you needed the yeah. centre forward. Yeah. Yeah. I, but I was That's saying this too, about. Anto. I was saying this, and you call me crazy. I was saying I don't think Giroud is good enough to be a starter for Milan anymore. I think he's too old, unfortunately. I think he could be a backup, but I think... Too old. He's, Milan, getting, he's playing new positions now. Yeah, maybe as a goalkeeper, he's pretty well, good at that. But I don't think... He, I he, think he's like good... Like players two seasons ago. I think he's good enough to play one game a week, but to play two games and one is a Champions League, where, yeah, I think it's too I, much. I don't are, know. Are you I, getting, like, I think it's too Are you going to keep those on? I don't, yeah. think, yeah. I don't think he's good enough to another glass of wine? Uh, that, that will I want to see him drink. I want to see you... Uh, can you give me a, a glass of IFTV? No, I'm, I'm gonna just drink it with. I'm gonna uh, pour it for you. Yeah, thank you. I want to see you drink it nice. with. Me. Nice. Anyway, Gatano, Giroud is not the problem. Giroud, Giroud. I'm not so saying. I didn't say it was a problem. Scores, he scores. He just I'm saying extra, this, you need an extra centre forward. Yeah. Well, okay, we can. And you made true. a big mistake because. Go, oh, that's it. That, oh, perfect. I'm gonna drink it with two hands. <laughs> with the glass, don't drop it. The only cup Bilan are winning this season right here. Anto's holding it. I have to be, you know, guys, this is their future. This what is their what future. I'm saying is, uh, is Giroud is not a problem. I think Giroud is a good player. He's yeah. very good. But I don't think he can that's play that's two that's games that's a week. I and one of them being a Champions yeah. League. That's I all I'm saying. I have to be, no. I have to be, no. Oh, I have to be, no. He's got bowling balls on right I now. I love it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> that little laugh at that. That little laugh at that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. IFTV, you know, from Bocca di Vino. <laughs> Bocca di Fuoco. Uh, shall we move on? I think we, yeah. I think we also know Theo and Magnan against Juventus. That's it's right, okay. Juventus is not a game, a game that it, it, it's, it you worries me. You can rotate your players against yeah. Juventus? Yeah, Juventus is not a team that worries me. Ooh. Five clean sheets. They got another it's clean okay, sheet against Torino. It's okay, but look at the they way. They won without Chiesa, without Vlaovic. And this is the winning formula for you guys. Get rid of those two guys <laughs> if you want to win, uh, if you want to go far on the campionato. You and know? Gatti looks good. Gatti, yeah. yeah. Called for the national team too. Yeah, yeah. Very happy for him. Well, Very happy for him. First goal for Juventus, for not Juve. against Juventus. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. And uh, also it was funny, his uh, his nonno, his grandpa was a Torino fan. Yeah. <laughs> he said he cried Ooh. the day that he signed for, for uh, Juventus. All right. Um, Did he cry because he knew he was going to be rich? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that was the only that was the only black note for the Sunday because I was hoping for at least Juventus uh, to come with a negative uh, uh, results. But uh, I wanted Torino to tie they or win. They did nothing. Yo, but, uh, that Torino derby, did nothing. Yeah, they got to take that. <laughs> you know, they got to change the name. No more derby. That, that can't be called Listen, a derby yeah, anymore. That's, that's, that's so, yeah. That is so... I can't even, I'm not even going to say anything. Yo, I have a, I have a hilarious la, staff la for you guys. La mole you know, I don't know. Torino... Torino you have not won in uh, in Juventus in Juventus stadium since 1995 since the year Michael and I were born they haven't won in Torino mm. and Antonio um, and, and yes and Antonio <laughs> and Juric before the match literally I, I read his press conference from top to bottom he literally said every time we play really well we go 50 50 with Juventus and we lose off of set pieces. They literally conceded two set piece goals. Back to back. 11, back to back. 11 of Juventus's last 15 goals against Torino have come off of set pieces. Mm. And then you lost the game again Bro. on set pieces. But look what Milinkovic shot. Yo, he's, seven, he's seven foot 
tall for Come nothing, on. that guy. He came out two times, and you you have the advantage of using your hands, and you miss time to hit it out. He could give you a foot at this point. Yo, yeah, Milly was Seriously. an hour before him. If, he did him by an hour before If him. I was that tall, I would never miss anything. Forget it. That guy was clum, so clumsy. He I think the loss is on Juric. It's, I think Juric is... Not, if he's not 190 percent responsible, but to be honest, it's loss. not like you've been well, spectacular. Uh, I mean, uh, it was a boring game overall. Uh, you didn't do anything. So Torino have a scoring right. problem. They scored six goals so far. They are now three games in a row with zero goals scored. There was some controversy before the match um, where Radonic was not called up to the game. Radonic, when he's on his day, the guy looks it's like he could good. be playing in any team in the world. The problem is he's not consistent. He's had problems in training where he's not always training his best. Um, the day before, Juric said, like I said in his press conference, he said he has too many ups and downs and he doesn't always like his attitude. Before the match, then he clarified saying, oh, no, he's injured. Whether he's injured, whether he's not injured, who knows? Does it get to a point? And I, we know Juric, we know how Juric is. He's been in this league for a long time. He's my way or the highway. Does it get to a point with this Torino side where they're struggling so much where you have to sort of just look at one of your best players and be like... Bite my tongue no matter what. I got to have this guy in my team. I think, yeah, because he's playing with the team. Let's be honest. So, you know, they don't have any world beaters on their team at the end of the day, right? They have a couple good guys. They're just not consistent. Like, Vlasic is really good. Radonic, Karamol, Ricci. I don't know. I, I feel th those guys aren't going to give be giving you consistent performances week in and week out. And Juric is in a, like kind of a tough position because... Zapata. First of all, Kaido isn't the one to spend that much either. Zanabria. Has, Zapata did come in. Zapata did a lousy, very bad game. He, I was, he made he so many mistakes. <laughs> he made so many mistakes. And Zapata, I like him a lot. Yeah, I'm a big I, fan of Zapata. Oh, boy. God. No, you can't. You, uh, if you're a coach, you cannot do that. I mean, you have the rules, you have regulation. And if you allow that to happen, then the other players are looking and that's going to spread to the other mm. players. You, what do you do? You, you, just you, you, you leave can. him out. No, you, you have to leave him out. He if, also has... If he has a problem, and if he's not training the right way, if he's not practicing the right way, then... Because um, if you don't, you lose respect for your players. Yeah, you from you your have players. to leave him out. Mm -hmm. um, well, I'm yeah, going to say go. this, then if you want, you, you can take it out. But I'm oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> Conrad, Conrad. <laughs> producer, get ready. Producer. <laughs> the way you pause, Jesus I knew something Christ. was Let the producer uh, decide. Holy producer, holy. we have but a very hot statement. I'm, I'm watching. <laughs> <laughs> Breaking news. Yeah. I'm watching right now Beckham. And that thing is so good. Um, unbelievable. I mean, and I love Sir Ferguson. And this is, you know, you, you have a star. This guy is 17 years old and he's starting for Man United. The guy scores a goal. The guy is, he loves, he leaves for Man United. The guy's 23 years old, he's on top of the world. If you don't respect the rules, you're out. You know, and that's the way the team comes first. The team comes first, everything else comes second. So if your private life, if you're going to have your private life influence the way you're playing, which it already did, then you're out. But do you think he was right? I, I'm I'm totally with you. Um, I love Sir Alex. I love the way that he was as a, as a person and how he set the rules. And I think watching this documentary, I realized that I really miss football of old, where mm -hmm. he could just say exactly what he felt. Sure. Yeah. The players were honest. They took responsibility. All those cliches. But in that in that circumstance, I, I sort of felt like he was a little bit too old school. Like I said, I love the old school style. In that specific case, was it really affecting Beckham? Well, he thought he, yeah, he thought he was, you know. So it, it's it, it's his call, you know. He's the coach. Yeah. He puts he puts the team first before anything else. And he thought he, there were too many distractions going on. But the thing there is that the marriage between Sir Alex and Manchester United is like this. It's very strong. Yeah. You have to have that because I mean, we've already seen Juric fight, literally throw fist at his sporting director mm -hmm. at Torino. Mm -hmm. So does he really have that ability? Does he have that same relationship that Sir Alex has? Obviously, he doesn't have the career like that to say, to be able to put out a guy like Radonjic. Or is the club going to look at him and be like, hey, you played Radonjic or you're going to be the one that ends up going? Yeah, but Marco Juric has got the backing of Cairo. Cairo and Juric are the best buddies. So, uh, uh, you know, might be the sporting director, is, uh, which is the, could be the middleman, but him and... Uh, and Cairo, they uh, they are on the same page. So uh, for now, yeah, I I, I think Juric Juric is a great coach. I mean, he's having a a little stretch of bad luck. He lost with AC Milan. He lost uh, several, uh, 
you know, not winnable game, but, uh, you know, game that you should have uh, put more points on the board. But uh, I think Juric uh, on the long run is going to is gonna prove us strong. He so, has a uh, few locker room problems, too. Mm-hmm. Sanabria is another one who I mm-hmm. love Sanabria. Mm-hmm. He had 12 goals last year, four assists. He said, it, and this was really interesting. It's, it's interesting when you hear, like, the behind-the-scenes stuff. Because by all stretches of the imagination, you think... Torino kept their men. They're going to do better. They're all going to be synchronized. They got Zapata. That's going to create healthy competition. He says that the competition has actually hurt Sanabria. The fact that Zapata came in has made him train worse. And he said he also did this when Belotti was there. He said when Sanabria is the only guy, Mm. he's my man. He knows that every week, week in and and out, he starts performing. But when he thinks that he's got a guy in front of him or behind him (sighs) chasing down his neck, he's not able to do the same Performances. You know, no, why don't you help me understand something, okay? So, una perdita con la Juventus ci può, ci può pure stare. In Italy we say, when you lose against Juventus, you know, you can have to even accept that. But losing against mm-hmm. Juventus without Vlaovic and without Chiesa, that could be a little harder. But, you know, nevertheless, you didn't lose against Salerno. But, it, but it's, it's more than that, Anto. It's six goals all season, six ah, goals in eight games. I know, I know. It's three games in a row with no goals. So it's the full circle it's of... A, it's the derby. It's, it's the derby. I guess the people... Uh, I don't the know derby, I, I agree with Anto. They're going to lose the derby. They yeah. always lose the derby. <laughs> I mean... Let's see what's, what happens with the next two, three games. I think uh, after uh, the, 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 the national team uh, plays out, we'll see what happens. I think Juric is going gonna, is gonna, is gonna to prove us strong. I let's, hope. Let's go on to Inter. I think the next game uh, Torino plays, is it against Inter? That. I'm pretty oh, sure it's boy. against no. Inter. Oh, I'll find boy. out. I got it. He should get his uh, no, suitcase. No. Torino Inter. Oh. Inter. He get he's got to get a suitcase as well. He has, he has, he's yeah, prepared. Right. I'm like you guys. Yeah, Ando, yeah. Even Anto's prepared with his yeah. <laughs> so he's, he's, Yo, We should just throw you something at you like, randomly and see if you, you know catch it. You know what looks it. like? A kid on... A year old kid on Christmas that's got woolly gloves. Yeah, Halloween. Mr. Producer, throw me a big shot like a 70 miles an hour. You can go back to the emergency room. You're gonna have another. Yeah, yeah, Mr. Yo, you're gonna hit something. Be careful. <laughs> you just That's what they do to waste time, the goalkeeper. Mike. <laughs> Mike Magnan. <laughs> Mike Magnan, you're right. <laughs> Guys, how the Mike? I caught Mike. I caught him, Mike. Mike, I caught you. That's the only thing you caught today. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> That's true. Do we explain? Uh, Anto went no, fishing, he didn't catch a fish. Yeah, we said it in the beginning. Oh, okay. um, let's go on to Inter. He, was eating, he went to the sandwich shop after the <laughs> Let's <laughs> talk about Inter, that's Inter, right. Up 2-0, threw it oh away 2-2 Lord. to Bologna. Uh, Bologna, I think Thiago Motta is one of the best coaches, if not the best coach in Serie A in terms of the youngsters. Consistently puts out a, a strong team. But to, the ability to be down two goals and at San Siro... And you come back and tie 2-2. We know that he's strong. They tied Juventus. They tied Napoli. But I didn't think they had this inside yeah. of them. Um, to be honest, I was just... It being 2 zeros, like, ah, one of the classic in their performance. They're going to score another couple. Lautaro's going to get his hat trick. Whatever the case was. <laughs> and then it went 2-1. And we're like, well, maybe there's something. Well, it was yeah. a penalty the first goal, right? But Lautaro, Lautaro, he tackled this guy here. He grabbed him like that. And he wrestled him down. Yeah, that's... No, what no, they no, say? No, 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 Attack is like defending? What, they say something for that, yeah. right? That the guy was not, not, not even in the but position no, to, uh, to score. No, the, uh, the coach is doing a, a great job. But I love that guy. Zig it, zig it, zig it, zig it. Yeah, zig 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 Zig-zag. I call him Zigzag and Zigzag. That guy is so good. Zig-zag. He was at Bayern Munich. That guy was a backup that, for Lewandowski. That hmm. guy is, it, it, you know, whoever brought him to uh, to Bologna they did a good job. He didn't look that great even last year. Like he he had his moments where he was struggling. I didn't expect him to be this good. And oftentimes, every time I watch Bologna, he's not really a nine. He's like a nine and a half. He. He doesn't really want to be the center forward, but this year he he's headering the ball. He's Maybe. getting into 50 50 challenges. He can take people on. He helps the team play well. I was happy that he's able to even score a goal now, too. Yeah, it's interesting. I read somewhere, a man that I don't remember where it was from, but he was, um, I forgot who said it, man. I'm so annoyed. But he said when he took the shot, he looked at the corner at the top right corner to fool the keeper and then he slid it bottom left corner so it, made, so it made the goalkeeper already assume and just pass by him because all his momentum was wow. there and I was like oh my god that's that's genius he made Summer, I didn't look, think he made summer look like a, a rookie I'm telling you he just says what the hell oh man yeah. he faked him he but faked Thiago, him. we gotta give credit to Thiago Mota a lot of people had some doubts with him I really feel like he's 
he's not tough on his team like that, but I feel like he's one of those coaches that everyone appreciates him, everyone likes him. He seems like a great, friendly guy that you just want to fight, like sort of like a. Ask Arnautovic about that. Ooh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> he had no, big I problems mean, with Arnautovic. You know, but then again, that was a little different because he didn't want to leave and he didn't leave that season. So there was some hostility in that sense, right? Because he wanted to leave the season before. No, I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm just saying. Uh, I think that we always we're very excited with young coaches, like, and we we can make the list for you. The difference is, it's you're gonna be mad at me, but it's the Gasparini effect. Are you good at handling big names? If you want to take yeah. that next level, and Tiago Mota, he was a big player. He came, he was at PSG. He's been around stars, so I would assume that he has that. We don't know all the situation with Arnautovic, yes. but I think the great thing about him is the way that they press the ball. They are so hard to play against because of the way that they press you immediately. Yeah. I remember they when you met those, they couldn't play out of the back and. I've said this before. This Inter side is amazing. They really are a really well built team. Mm. The only way I think you beat this Inter side because if you sit back, they if you find ways. Them, if you they find them. ways to get through you. It's pressing them. Pressing. It's when you press them. Real Sociedad did it really well in the in the Champions League match mm. where they got the one one. It's very difficult. You press them. It's, it's very, very difficult very because difficult. If, number one, if the whole team doesn't do it, you're screwed. That's it. Yeah, you kill. Uh, but if they make that pass through to the midfield, Inter breaks so quickly that they're through on goal. Counterattack specialist, yeah. boom. But right. if you get it nailed down, yeah. this is the result. But it's not something that you teach, Very. though. That's something that a team needs to know. It's not like, oh, we're playing them. We're going to pr- – you got to know that. It's got to be in the Very philosophy. Very balanced team. Yeah. Uh, every every position. Maybe a little short uh, as a forward. Probably they need another forward up Maybe there. Lautaro Gaetano. He's saying no, Bologna. Bologna. Oh, Bologna. Bologna. Oh, of no, course. no, no. I'm talking about Inter. Oh, are you? Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. You're I'm talking me. about Inter. I think it's okay. a very balanced team. Every position. They got two players for every position. Except the forward line. They only have those two forwards. Turam. Turam and Laudaro. They got a lot of speed over there. Yeah, yeah but... <laughs> What if one of them uh, goes down? You need somebody else. They don't have anyone. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's Alexis Sanchez and, and it's Arnautovic, but it's yeah. not Arnautovic. Yeah, Arnautovic. Yeah, Sanchez, this free so, sign of Sanchez, yeah. I think it is not going to produce much. Uh, maybe Sanchez needs they to get a little, uh, a little sip Maybe in January IFTV they could use another, the another forward. I'm just surprised that I thought that this Interside had matured to the point that when they at 2-0, they mm. could see out a game. Mm. The midfield was a little bit all over the place. Maybe they got ahead of themselves. Yeah, I think it was that. Last year, the sure. problem was losing points to the small teams. I think that this one, Bologna is a very good side. Like, I don't want to discredit. Mm. And yeah. you guys actually made them look a lot worse than they are. When I watched Absolutely. Milan play Bologna... I said, my gosh, Bologna's driving me crazy. I thought Bologna was going to be really good. You guys had made that game look easier, and yeah, I think Bologna is showing that we, they bounce back. Yeah, but uh, Marco, it was only two two big rush of of uh, uh, layout that put counter the two counters yeah. that put uh, the, the position. Uh, yeah. uh, Okafor, I think, was one, and then the it other was individual, one. Uh, individual yeah, efforts. Yeah, yeah, I don't, yeah. No, I think Milan had a tough time with Bologna too. I mean, go analyze the the, the game. We had this this big rush of layout coming down the left, and then. Uh, Putting the ball to assist on the, on the middle, and AC Milan wound up uh, having the upper ends with the Bologna. But uh, you know, Bologna they're not, not really much. Uh, they don't have much to blame themselves for the loss. So they they play their games. So uh, Inter were not uh, able to. Uh, they did. They had a lack of concentration. Put it this way, Lautaro. Inter could have closed the game on a two nothing if Lautaro didn't make the stupid tackle. Yeah, yeah that gave them a lot mistake. of gave them a lot of motivation to come back after that. So yeah. where else we gotta go, Roma? Let's end this out with uh, some Roma talk. Mm-hmm. Oh, boy. Uh, 4-1. The uh, pressure was uh, mounting on Jose. Correa del Sport had said before the game that if he lost his game, then they were thinking about sacking him. And I saw some people arguing the Corriere del Sport news, but they're actually the paper that he gave the exclusive interview mm-hmm. with in the summer. They're based out of Rome, too. They're pro-Roma. Yeah. So I thought that was surprising. I think his players responded. Three wins in a row. Lukaku is I'm on fire, fire now. What is it? Seven goals in eight games? Seven, no? All competition, sorry. All comps, probably. Even on the on the conference league. And we, posted, scored, we posted on the RG. He scores every, go, every scores. game. He scores every yeah. game. I think he it's scores. seven. I have seven and eight. And then only Batistuta started better than him. Mm. Yeah. Nah, he's doing good. Dybala, unfortunately, came off injured. It's Thankfully, it's not as serious as uh, it seems. One month. Um, mm. He's expected to be out. And the international breaks... 50-50 for the Inter. There. He's 50-50 for the game against Inter. Uh, if he'll make it, that's the only thing with Roma. It's like every time we get excited, you're yeah. like, oh, finally. The, they the, score eight goals in the last two games. There's always a setback. You're, you're excited, then Dybal has to get injured. And there's always a setback. But that is what you get when you sign players also, that are injured. By, no, uh, I want to say something about, about the Roma team. 
I think that uh, Paredes has brought, I mean, I like Cristante, I love Cristante, but I think that Paredes has brought some balance in, in that midfield. midfield. In that midfield, yeah. I think. He breaks it up more. He, he has, uh, maybe he was not good enough uh, for Juventus, uh, but for this team, I think, and because of Mourinho, maybe the coach that believes in him and makes him, uh, uh, you know, give us confidence. But he is good. He's, he's good, good enough for the Argentinian national team. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But, but he, so he's not good enough for Juventus. Yeah, Allegri, I guess, was not good enough. It's for the same yeah, thing with Artur. But yeah, because coach. Allegri ah, and Artur, look, you know, Artur is they, they never played. He plays for Brazil. But but that, no, I'm not saying oh, Artur okay. for Fiorentina. I, I, if you're yeah. sure, I thought you were going to say Brazil. because No, I'm just pointing out players that yeah. we're highlighting uh -huh. that look how good they're looking in one place right. and at Juventus they but don't look good. They're not good enough for Juventus. Style. But if the coach style. doesn't believe you, if Allegri doesn't believe yeah. you and it doesn't, uh, you know, that maybe you don't want to play for this guy. But for Mourinho, mm -hmm. maybe you want to play and the guy gives you the uh, the trust because that's what you need. You need yeah. you need the coach to a trust chance. you. Give you a chance. And he, I think he's doing a very good job in that in the middle. And Cristante, when you need him in defense, you put him in defense. When you need him in midfield, he's a good he center back. And then he can score goals too. I mean, the guy is... Yeah. Um, Cristante, yeah, you got to give it to him. Especially players that are versatile. That You got to love players that are like, I'll play whatever position you need. Right. You need players like that in a team. It shows You need like one or two. Yeah, yeah, it can't exactly. all be like no, that. No, no, not all like that. Yeah, but it's good to have someone like that. They got like enough that. of those at Roma. And it shows that the team's fighting. For, it's not like when a team's playing bad, they want to sack the coach, they don't play good. You can still see mm. the team still have Jose's back. So they're still playing. They were, we want to fight for him, you know? They did so much. We're in a pickle, but we still want him to be the coach. So I think that's a, a really big... Uh, that's it's a really Milan's big thing. got a couple of those guys. He's got Ryan. All right, we're talking about. And now we got we're not talking about. Yeah, I, this is my. Why team. Adley, why Adley is, gave away like every ball. Yo, he is, gave every ball uh, away why in don't general. People like I don't Adley. Know, Adley. I, maybe I'm missing Adley. something. You're not missing anything. Adley. He seems like a great guy, you know, maybe for like for the, beer or oh. something. But I don't All right. know. Man. Uh, Roma. The, you know who else I liked too? Sorry, go. No, go, go. I like Bove. I like Bove. Man, the guy recovers. Bove. Bove. This guy says Bove. Yo, this guy says Bobe. Okay, who cares? The point <laughs> is that he's a very good player. Bobe. If there is no it's accent, Bobe. it's, it's Bobe. Bobe. Yeah. He had he had 14 uh, challenges yeah, that he I made. Say, uh, he yeah. recovered the ball extremely well. Yeah, he brought a little bit of energy to the team, a little bit of a spark. And this is the reality of the Roma side is they need to build up players from the youth teams. Pagano's another one that we saw get put into the game. They're playing against Cagliari, who, I mean, bottom of the table or second to bottom no, of the table, bottom whatever the table. it is, bottom. zero, zero bottom. wins all season. Oh, he's got two points, though. Two yeah, points. Two yeah, they got two, two draws. draws. Ranieri. Four consecutive losses. Yeah, I was going to say no, that. No, they're, they're keeping him. Cagliari came out and said, it's the schedule. It's not Ranieri. Mm. They said that they came late into the Serie A because of all of the uh, the extra game that they had to just <laughs> qualify in the playoff. They eliminated Bari, apparently. And then all of a sudden, did the ball burn? All of a sudden, all Ranieri is gonna find himself on the hot. You know, if he doesn't win against Salernitana the next game, listen, I'm a big fan of Ranieri, but the way he plays, though, just watching the like, it's one thing to see results, and there's one thing to see. Like, it must have discotheque, you know? Discotheque. I didn't bring my shoes. Ran out of battery. Oh, that's what it is. Okay, we're gonna switch on. No, we, there's no other one. It's it. No, no, I'm saying this. No, we're just gonna. We're, we have like no, nothing else to say. Anyway. We have nothing else to say, guys. Nothing on the oh. national team. <laughs> we're gonna keep. Yo, producers. Uh, Mr. Producer. <laughs> Mr. Producer, we really got a power. I think. I think the next podcast, the producer. No, the producer. Like a Like a And an end with a new. All right, guys. Oh, I just wanna say. There's one thing with results, and the one thing in performance is Cali right now, they can't even string two passes together. So I hope they do better. I like Ranieri, but I want Cali to stay up in Serie A. So, yeah, yeah I agree with you, Gaetano. And Salernitano, if there's no improvements out. No, no, if there's not a point. Bye bye, 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 Ranieri. Bye bye, Ranieri. Bye bye, everyone. Cheers. Forza Italia. Forza Italia. This week. Grazie, grazie.